Okay, today we're working on a, uh, trying to get this running again. This is a uh, G154 I picked up a few months ago out of Detroit area. <clears throat> Guy couldn't get it started. And uh, so as the story has it, they, his dad bought it new in 1978 or somewhere around there. And then uh, ran it all those years and uh, about 15 years ago he was running and he said it died on him which would have led me to led me to believe he ran it out of fuel um which is what he actually said he remembers he said there was no fuel coming out of the injectors when he started playing around with them and i don't know if that was recently or 15 years ago anyway he ended up rebuilding the injectors and having the pump looked at and everything was fine um but he put it back together and still couldn't get it to go uh, went and picked it up, brought it home, tried to start it, definitely was getting fuel, smoking a lot, but uh, it turned over very easy, which is a uh, sign of low compression, so did a compression check, and the front cylinder was about 250, and the rear was about 100, and so, uh, so on to uh, trying to restore that, and of course uh, the right thing to do would probably be to bore it out. Um, I was told that if, if there's any ridge at all it needs to be bored and almost every one of these I pop open have some sort of ridge as you can see there's there's uh, obviously ridges on these too that I'm not going to be able to hone out but I really don't want to sink the thousand dollars or whatever it's going to end up being just to get this board out with new pistons so uh, so I'm just going to try and slap a set of rings in I already have a head gasket somewhere here head gasket and I have a partially used set of rings that came out of that tractor which we ended up boring out and uh, as you might remember from a previous video and because the oil pan gasket doesn't match up it leaks anyway that one runs a little bit better now it's still it's still not quite what I thought it should be there's no blow by but it it's it's um, Seems like it struggles to start and stay running without the glow plugs, which is surprising. But that does have those recessed pistons and that lower compression ratio, so that I'm sure it has something to do with it. Uh, but anyway, back to this one. The point of this video is I want to just kind of document for my own purposes, you know, what what you might be able to get away with here. Because I don't know if this is going to work, but I just want to point out some, some things. Um, this cylinder, the, the rings were actually free. Uh, but it was it was building hardly any compression. This one, the, the rings ended up getting stuck on the pistons, and I got them soaking right now. So they're uh, basically the everything but the top ring was stuck on there, stuck onto the piston. I don't know if that's from all the cranking and trying to get it to run, and it's just carboned up or what. But um, um, but I came to the conclusion that this cylinder is definitely in, in better shape, even despite the struck, stuck rings. But this one, of course, without the rings being stuck, um, it certainly indicates um, it's, it has some problems. So, uh, so I stuck a uh, dial bore indicator in there and um, and measured it. And I measured it at the at the ridge at first because there's no wear on the ridge. And um, and it was pretty much within factory bore specs. So as soon as you drop down below that ridge, it, it jumped up 12 thousandths in the in the worst case front to rear. So it, what I learned is primarily the wear is from front to rear, despite the piston rod going side to side. I always thought there would be more wear side to side than front to back. And I don't know if that's because the piston has a greater surface area side to side. It's compensating for that a little bit more than, than the front to rear or what. But, um, but as you can see, I think as you can see, um, you can see where I, where I did some, some honing. I didn't hone this one as much as this one. Uh, where I honed it, you can still see that second ridge down here. And that's definitely side to side. And you can see it a little bit left to right too. But... It definitely is more pronounced in the front and the rear, and I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, this front cylinder, it's more in the rear as well, as almost in the front it went away. But um, And then, it's kind of interesting, we'll go over to the other side. 
was that through the honing process I actually was able to if you look here you can and I can't feel a ridge anymore so there uh, again uh, it proves the bore dial bore indicator is working correctly it's showing less wear here than front to rear so although I in the worst spot this rear cylinder was showing nine thousandths um, so not a huge difference nine to twelve that's what I re remember I got it written down but uh, so anyway, I measured the pistons, and, and they have uh, about five, let's see, was it five? No, I think up to seven thousandths of wear, or eight on those as well. So in the worst case uh, spot on the cylinder, we were looking at twenty thousandths uh, between the piston and the, uh, and the cylinder. So, and that's at the piston skirt, obviously, which doesn't get up that high, so it's probably even greater than that, so... So again, just documenting this for the future, this may not actually run. Serial number on this block is 40746, just for the record. Um, Going to put some new rings in, and new used rings. These are used rings from that other engine. You can see they're, they're kind of carboned up a little bit. But they're, uh, I think, again, I don't want to buy new rings and all this stuff because I already went through it with that one. And it didn't end up helping me. So uh, but I'm going to try it here basically just because if I can get it to run. And the other one did run. It just was it was tough going. And so and it even as yet after the bore and new piston. So uh, but not nearly as bad. But anyway this is the uh, top ring out of that rear cylinder. And you can see hopefully the camera shows it how much how much thinner this ring actually is. You can you know it's probably i don't know at least 10 15 thousandths worn and the spring in this is is very little and you can see the gap is is much more and if you put them in the cylinder this has a huge gap in it on the end this one tightens up pretty good so anyway that's going to help out a lot and uh one other point too to mention i you know how thick this oil is on here i'm going to have to clean that out but um it just goes to show you that you really need to change that oil every once in a while and i know it's supposed to be every 100 hours without an hour meter it's easy to lose track to how many hours you have i would just say you know change it at least every couple of years if you don't use it that much that way you know you're staying well below that 100 hours unless you're getting a lot of use out of your tractor but i suspect as in the case of most of this stuff this thing probably went years if not decade or two without the oil being changed and used on occasion and that's what you get. This is probably as bad as if I've ever seen it. I mean, that's that can't be good. And uh, I'm sure that helped accelerate that cylinder wear, too. So uh, anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get those rings on there. I'll clean up those pistons and ring grooves. We'll put those new rings on, uh, clean everything up here, and uh, put it back together and see if we can get it to run. If it runs, I'm probably not even going to bother doing a compression check. I'll just leave it together until either it won't start again or, or it lasts. So we'll see what happens.